Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, in October, before one month before the Genzoe, uh, Hoko allowed me to focus on making preparation for uh, my lectures during Genzoe. I gave two 90-minute uh, lecture a day for five days. So it was a lot of work, and I need to make a lot of preparation. So I really appreciate her <coughs> uh, compassion to me. Anyway, so uh, the last time I gave a Sunday Dharma talk was in my record, uh, September 29th. Uh, and today, uh, I will continue to talk on this text, opening the hand of thought, uh, page 132, if you have this book. <coughs> uh, let me read one paragraph. <coughs> uh, the bottom of page 132. When we settle on an attitude toward life whereby universal self lives out its own reality of life. I do not mean to imply that heaven and hell or happiness and, uh, and unhappiness cease to exist, but that it becomes clear that all these are just the scenery of our lives. In the life of the whole self, various scenery unfolds, but the absolute reality, the undeniable fact, is that whatever happens, self lives out self that is only self. Uh, in this part of this book, Uchiyamuro uh, talks about the significance of our practice in the modern civilization. And uh, uh, first he, he explains our, the meaning of our Zazen. And uh, here, in here he talks about how our Zazen function works in our lives in this modern world. And uh, he discuss uh, how our Zazen works in our daily lives in terms of uh, Sanshin. Sanshin uh, literally means three minds. Uh, that is the name of this temple. Uh, and those three minds are uh, Daishin and Roshin and Kishin. Shin or mind. Actually, during the last Genzoi, I talked about the mind throughout the history of Buddhist teachings, but I don't have time to talk about that <laughs> today. But this Dai means big or large, or uh, uh, in our translation, magnanimous. And Lo uh, literally means old or matured, and we translate this as a parental mind or a nurturing mind. And third is a key, means joy, joyful mind. Those are three minds. And uh, these three minds are mentioned by Dogen Zenji in his writing about 
uh, his instructions to the Tenzo. Tenzo is a cook in a Zen monastery. And he said, at the end of Tenzo Kyokun, or instruction to the Tenzo, he said, not only the Tenzo, person who uh, prepare meals in the, in the community, but uh, all members of the community, including abbot, or directors, or officers, or all other uh, monks, need to maintain this uh, three minds. And uh, I don't like this uh, English expression, three minds, as plural. I try not use uh, English or X word, but I use uh, Japanese sanshin. Because uh, I don't think these three are three different minds. But this is uh, how one mind uh, function in three ways. So actually these are not three, but these are one. And yet these are three. Anyway, <coughs> uh, here in this uh, section from uh, 131, the last page, he's talking about the direction of the universal. Then he, I mean, Dogen and Uchiyamuro talks about this uh, big or magnanimous mind. This mind is, uh, in Tenzo Kyokun, Dogen then said, this mind is like a mind as a big mountains or a big ocean. Mountain uh, doesn't move, it's stable and allow all different kinds of uh, plants and animals and all other uh, uh, living beings uh, stay and live uh, in the mountains. So mountain doesn't move and doesn't make choice but allow all of them to be themselves. And all of them are interconnected within the mountain. And the ocean uh, accept all the waters from different rivers. Uh, and when they come in, in one ocean, this one ocean is really one ocean. There's no such a separation or distinction or discrimination about of which the river uh, came to this ocean. Uh, this e expression, uh, great ocean, is used uh, to refer to a Buddhist uh, Sangha or communities. Shakyamuni allowed any people from any background or any uh, classes in the uh, society, you know, in Indian society, there is a, uh, a very strict, what they call, uh, caste. caste or class, uh, classes, and and yet when a people from any classes, when uh, they come into Buddhist Sangha, they are uh, equal. Only kind of a, uh, what is the word? A, 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 stages or status is uh, how long what the person has been practicing within the Sangha. So seniority is only a kind of status. Anyway, <coughs> then uh, Dogen and Uchiyamuro talk about this, uh, this mind, Magranma's mind, this is mind without discrimination and allowed everything uh, to come in and be there. And uh, Uchiyamaro uh, said, uh, as an individual person, we are uh, as one, and this one is, is different from 
other people when you are really completely one being from uh, one side. And uh, yet uh, another reality is we are together with all beings within this entire universe. And I he said this is the self as one and this is the self as infinity. But between one and infinity, there is a zero. That means each one of us or this uh, five scandals are empty. So there is no such individuality actually. But as a, a common sense uh, or conventional truth, we think uh, we know each one of us are individual and independent. And we have uh, our own uh, uniqueness as a karmic uh, attribute of these five skandhas. And yet, uh, there is no such individual, individual person uh, that is independent uh, uh, without a relation with uh, other beings. That means we are interconnected. That means uh, we, our, this unique being has to change when other things uh, around us change, we have to change. So there is no such fixed entity that can exist uh, independent from other beings. That is what emptiness means. And when we see emptiness of uh, each individual beings, we feel not feel, but we discover that we are all connected with all beings. So this uh, magnanimous mind has something to do with the structure of how we are, the structure of the self. So uh, what he said, we are actually living the universal life, that is the life together with all beings. So that is what magnanimous mind came from. But uh, so within this magnanimous mind, uh, because there's no distinction, discrimination, and no uh, 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 discrimination and what? Discrimination. There's no discrimination, there's no choice. So we don't need to make choice. We are together with all beings always. Uh, so uh, as a kind of uh, our common way of thinking, within uh, this universal life, there's no direction. It's, uh, this is it only th this moment or that moment. But for, uh, the title of this uh, se uh, section from page 131 is The Direction of the Universal. I mean, this universal <coughs> life has direction we need to go. That is uh, <coughs> what uh, he is uh, talking. And this direction uh, is actually what uh, which is called a low shin or a parental mind or a nurturing mind. And uh, in order to connect this big uh, magnanimous mind which has no uh, separation, no discrimination, but as a, uh, in our mind function as a parental mind or a nurturing mind, we have to make distinction. Parental mind is like a mind of parent. Uh, when parent, uh, you know, raise children, you know, parent try to uh, do, you know, best things, best choice for their children. To do so parents need to make a distinction and, and make choice which is best. 
for their children. And uh, here as a boy sat were not only our uh, within our family, but we need to uh, think in you know, all beings within this interconnectedness are our children. That is what uh, is said in the uh, Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni said, uh, you know, this entire uh, threefold world is my domain, and all beings within this world are my children. So as a Bodhisattva, as a Buddha's children, we need to uh, share the same spirit that all beings are our children. So uh, we have to make choice, we have to make distinction and make choice which way we should go. That is what this law uh, or, or parental or nurturing mind means. But now he's trying to make a kind of a bridge between no direct, no discrimination and discrimination not for my this personal uh, desire to fulfill this personal desire but for the net, entire network of all beings. So that is, uh, he is in a kind of a process of making a connection between uh, no discrimination and discrimination as a parental mind. <coughs> Uh, so in this uh, paragraph, he is saying, uh, when we settle on, a, on an attitude, attitude toward life, whereby universal self, this is universal self, self together with all beings, lives out its own reality of life. But he said, I do not mean to imply that heaven and hell, or happiness and unhappiness, cease to exist, but that it becomes clear that all these are just the scenery of our lives. So what he is saying is, even though we are living this universal life, the life together with all beings, and we try not to make discrimination, still, uh, you know, heaven and hell, happiness and happiness are the things which Amrosh uh, uh, brought in the past, past few paragraphs. We are always trying to uh, kind of uh, make distinction or separation between heaven and hell or a good time a uh, difficult time, or uh, happiness, unhappiness, and we are always, always try to go this way, or we'll get that, those good things, and try to escape something we don't like, like a hell, or unhappiness, or a pain. That uh, making distinction, and discrimination, and making choice, uh, makes our life into sansara. This is what I always say, that, that is sansara. Whether we believe that uh, we will have uh, uh, another life after uh, our death, but only at least within this lifetime, we are always uh, transmigrating, always up and down. So sometimes we feel like we are, uh, you know, heavenly beings, and other times we feel like we are uh, hell dwellers, or sometimes we feel we are hungry ghosts. No matter how much we gain, we are still hungry, so we want to get more and more. Or sometimes we are just uh, sleepy. <laughs> if our stomach is filled, we are sleepy, and we don't want to do anything, you know, like a cat. <laughs> when they are happy, they just sleep. <laughs> and we human beings are always looking for not only 
uh, on the sink, our stomach is filled. But we chase after something like a, a, a social status or a good reputation or a, you know all those things that animals, cats and dog and cat don't don't uh, are not interested in. But we are very much interested in those kind of uh, uh, abstract things, be more than for, uh, filling our stomach. That is human beings and heavenly beings are people who, whose desires are completely fulfilled. And all those are still uh, within samsara transmigrating because no matter how happy we are, we may lose that happiness uh, sooner or later or any time. So there's no uh, absolute peacefulness, peace of mind within this uh, way of life. And that is called samsara. So in order to uh, be released from samsara, we need this uh, awakening to this uh, way of life, the way we are uh, connected with all beings, therefore this person is actually empty, so we can f start to see that uh, if other people are not happy, we cannot be really happy. So we try to uh, work uh, to uh, this interconnectedness even a little bit. Uh, better. And that is what parental mind means. So what Ujjam is saying, saying here is if we live uh, with this attitude, still there is uh, heaven and hell, or uh, happiness and unhappiness. This is uh, but uh, Dogen says, for example, uh, this is from Keisei Sanshoku. Keisei Sanshoku is <coughs> uh, sound of valley stream and the colors of mountains. In this fascicle of Shogogen, Dogen introduced uh, the Sushi's poem about the sound of valley stream is Buddha's voice and the colors of mountains is Buddha's uh, Dharma body. And uh, he put emphasis on arousing bodhicitta or uh, awakening mind or always seeking mind. And uh, in that first group, Dogen says, <clears throat> after having aroused body mind or bodhicitta or a way seeking mind, that is an aspiration to live together with all beings, not only for fulfilling my personal desire. Uh, even if they transmigrate within the six realms, through the four kinds of birth, the causes and conditions of trans transmigration will become practices and vows for awakening. So he is saying even we arrange bodhicitta and try to leave this uh, attitude without uh, discrimination and chasing after something I want or escaping from something I don't want, but try to find the best way to serve and others, all beings within this network, still we have, you know, sansara. It's, 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 it's not, it's Sunday, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, you know, the condition of, of our life doesn't change whether we are at bodhicitta or not. So sometimes we have good time, and other times we have very hard uh, 
in painful time. But uh, as a Bodhisattva, we need to continue to practice within this, con uh, this samsara in which things are changing. And not, uh, we cannot be always like a heavenly beings. And, and sometimes we, we see, you know, very difficult situation like a hell. But within this transmigration, within samsara, we need to find, a, keep a magnanimous mind and try to find what is the best thing to do to uh, change the situation or make this uh, entire connect connectedness in, in even a little bit uh, healthier. So our, you know, as a Bodhisattva, we need to stay in samsara uh, because of the, you know, after this talk, we, we chant the four uh, vows, and as I always say, uh, the first vows, uh, beings are numerous, we vow to save them, means we, we vow to save them all. And in order to save, uh, save them all, we need to stay in samsara. Uh, if we reach nirvana, then no one there. All beings are within samsara, so as a bodhisattva, we need to stay in samsara to work with other people or other beings. So as I always said, the, the other shore of nirvana is empty, no one there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All bodhisattvas are working within, within samsara, within this shore. So our vow, in a sense, our bodhisattva vow means we stay in samsara. So we, uh, there's no way we can escape from those changing of the situation and we have to go through, uh, you know, sometimes we can enjoy, you know, very happy situation, joyful situation, but sometimes we have to go through very sad or painful situation. And uh, uh, this morning I'd like to introduce uh, Fatu Uchemuroshi Lord about uh, his experience of very, his very painful experiences. Uh, in uh, his commentary on Tenzo Kyokun, that is uh, the source of this expression, three minds, or Sanshin. Uh, this uh, book, this book, this book entitled "From the Zen Kitchen to Enlightenment." I don't like this title. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, the publisher made uh, change the title of this book. The original title is uh, it became the uh, subtitle on this version. That is refining your life. Uh, but original title made by Uchiyamaroshi is uh, Jinsei Ryori no Hongi. Hong is book and no is off. And Jinsei is human life, and Ryori is cooking. So, cooking, that book of cooking human life. <laughs> I think uh, uh, this is an interesting title. <laughs> you know, uh, Dogen wrote uh, instructions for the, the cook, but uh, in this is, is intro instructions, there's no recipes <laughs> <laughs> about the cooking meals. But what he, Dogen wrote is what kind of attitude we should toward uh, our work 
in the case of a uh, cook uh, tenzo, uh, the kitchen kitchen is a world for tenzo, and tenzo needs to work together with you know food ingredient and uh, water and fire and uh, you know some uh, Chinese the monastery was uh, a large community some, somewhere they had more than 1,000 people. So uh, Tendo's job is not an uh, easy one. So uh, the Tendo needs to work all day. So Tendo needs to work, work together with uh, all those things, food ingredients and uh, water or fire and other things and utensils and people as a co-workers. And Fat Dogen Zenji uh, wrote in this text was what kind of attitude that Tendo person should towards those things when they tend to work together with all beings. So in a sense, uh, Dogen is teaching about how to cook our life. So when I worked with Tom Wright, uh, I he said, what about make, uh, about just uh, light, uh, a kind of a literal translation of this title, uh, book of cooking life or cooking human life. But uh, Tom Wright, he didn't like this uh, word, ryori, or cooking. He said in English, uh, you know, <coughs> this word cooking doesn't have a kind of a deep meaning, deep spiritual meaning. That's why he chose this expression, defining your life. In this case, defining is saying uh, kind of a, a meaning as a cooking. But in Japanese or Chinese, this word cook, ryori, uh, has a very deep meaning. That means ryori has two compounds of two Chinese uh, characters. And ryo means material, food material. And ri means principle. Ri in D and G, you know, in Zen uh, teachings. D is principle or ultimate truth, and G is a conventional or phenomenal truth. And uh, in the case of cooking, you know, those food ingredients are uh, phenomenal things, the materials. And we have to work with these material things based on the principle. So this means we need to, uh, or as a cook, we need to think how this material, this phenomenal uh, thing can be uh, served in the best way as a food to the people who eat. So each food ingredient has its own nature and uh, that there is a best way to uh, allow you know this uh, food ingredient to be most taste tasteful and nutritious, uh, and also looks good, looks nice. So to make the food ingredient into meals, uh, Tendo needs to work with some principle. That is fat. Uh, Ryori in Buddhism or in Chinese or Japanese means. Anyway, <clears throat> so this is actually our practice how to cook our life. You know, we already receive the material, food material, when we are born and when we started to think about uh, how. I should do what I should. I need to do, or what can I do? Uh, usually, we start to think this way when we become a teenager. But at that time, we are already 
some you know materials materials as a five scanners are already given and we cannot make choice you know if we can make a choice before we are born then we can choose best best thing but we have to make choice how to live only after all those ingredients are given so we are not 100% free, but somehow using these five scanners, we have to uh, make this food material into the most tasteful and nutritious or meaningful and uh, somehow useful or helpful for other beings. How can we? cook ourselves, uh, uh, treat ourselves in the best way and uh, make our life more, uh, most taste, tasteful, tasteful and nutritious and also looks good, looks neat. That is our Buddhist practice as a Bodhisattvas. So actually what we are doing is cooking these five scandals. So to me, you know, this this expression Jinse Ryori that was made by Uchiyamushi has a very deep meaning. Well, uh, I have to go through what he, he is talking. In a part of uh, Tenzo Kyokun, Dogen uh, introduced one of his ex experiences. <coughs> in Chinese monastery with a tenzo. Uh, one day after a uh, noon meal, noon meal in the monastery is a uh, uh, formal meal. Usually they don't have a formal supper. But anyway, uh, after lunch, he, he went back to his place to stay, where he stayed. Then uh, he saw an uh, old Tenzo person is working in front of the Buddha hall. Uh, and what he was doing was uh, drying uh, mushrooms. Uh, he looks very old and he didn't have a hat and he sweat a lot, so Dogen thought he was suffering, having a very uh, difficult, painful uh, uh, time. So he, uh, he came, he approached to that person and said, uh, you look so old, why don't, why don't you make the younger people to do this job? Then the tendo said, other people are not me. Other people are not me. Or tawa, kore, ware ni arazu. So this is my work, so I have to do this. If I ask other people <coughs> to do this job, then, you know, I lose my life. Uh, then uh, Dogen asked, uh, it's very hot now, so this is after lunch, so this is noon time, it's really hot, why don't you do it after uh, it becomes a little cooler? Then he, what he said, the tender said was, uh, what time can I wait for? That means he need to do this now, here and now, and I have to do this by myself. Uh, this means, you know, to dry mushrooms, you know, hot time, sunlight is important. If it's cool, it doesn't, you know, it's not the best time to, uh, you know, dry mushrooms. So this is the best time to dry mushrooms, and this is my work, so I have to do this by myself. That is uh, one of the very important experience for Dogen, 
and you know at that time Dogen was probably 23 or 4 years old, very young. And this is one of the most important things he, he learned in China. That is what he wrote in Tenzo Kyoku. But anyway, uh, in order to, when he, Uchiyamuroshi, uh, explain the meaning of this conversation between Dogen and this Tenzo, uh, he introduced one of his experiences. It's a very painful experience. Uh, if you want to check uh, with this book, it appeared in uh, page 79. Uh, this is what happened uh, in, it said in 1952. You know, uh, the World War II ended 45. So it's about uh, seven years after the World War II. That means, you know, far, uh, you know after the war, the uh, first few years, Japanese people are really uh, starving. But after that, it's getting better. But in 52, you know, Japanese people are still poor. And uh, around this time, Uchiyamuroshi, uh, I think Uchiyamuroshi started to live at Antaiji in 1948 or 49. 48 was the year I was born. So this is about 70 years ago. Uh, you know, he was, uh, so in Japanese society, people are very, still very poor. And yet, Uchiyamuroshi did takuhatsu or begging in Kyoto uh, almost uh, every day. Because, you know, Saokiroshi and Uchiyamuroshi at Antaiji never charge uh, people, lay people to come to session. So Uchamuroshi needs to uh, prepare the food by doing takuhatsu. You know, at Antaiji, even when I was there, uh, the <coughs> flyer of the session said, uh, bring a cup of rice for a meal you want to eat during your stay. So if you want to stay one day that, and have uh, three meals, uh, the person is asked to bring three cups of rice. That's all. So they never ask people to pay. So, uh, you know, even when we are there, we did takuhatsu or begging for uh, buying the food. And I think one day person made a, a pretty big amount of donation every each year for the session expenses. So Uchiyamuroshi never charged any money to the participant. Anyway, that's why he was uh, doing takuhatsu or begging uh, almost every day. <coughs> And one day he injured his toe while he was walking on the street. He injured his toe. And so he needed to uh, stay in a temple for a few days. And he thought the uh, injury was healed. So he went to Takuhatsu begging again. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it, was, it started to rain. So his injury became uh, infected with rain uh, and it started to, <coughs> uh, he, he started to have very serious pain and let me read from that uh, part. Said, Finally, the pain became worse and I de developed a high fever. 
it got so bad that I could not longer lie face up because the pain from the toe went directly to my head. I piled up several quilts, this means the futon, Japanese futon, uh, and laid on them, though it was a cold November, so it's uh, this time of the year. It, it was a cold November, I could not stand clothing or clothing or blankets because of the fever and pain all through the left side of my body, on the one side. I kept naked, cooling myself with a cold air, and suffered uh, through this, through this, without a drop of sleep for three days and three nights. So he couldn't sleep for three days and three nights because of this pain and the fever. I frequently thought, well, if I am going to die, then I will just die. But anyway, I was unable to see a doctor, uh, particularly during those days, the money I received from begging just would not have been enough to pay a doctor's bill because the Japanese people are still poor. Yeah. So uh, Uchamuro said, when he wrote about his takuhats or begging, he said, there are professional beggars, real beggars. So it's very competitive. <laughs> so it really, the, the amount of money he received was very tiny. So obviously he didn't have money to pay the doctor's bill. So he thought it's not com uh, possible to go to a doctor. Uh, however, an elderly lady who lived nearby did bring me some, uh, what is this, licorice, licorice, the virus. Do you know this? It's like a, the root of like a plant, like a lily. <coughs> anyway, uh, this uh, is used as a kind of uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, medicine. Uh, bring me some licorice bulbs. She had dug up and told me that if I ground them up, wrapped the mixture in paper, and applied it to my foot, it would help bring down the fever. So he just did as a kind of a treatment. I did as she suggested, reapplying the dress, uh, dressing frequently. The following is something I wrote shortly after the incident. So he had to stay in that condition for three days, and after he, after that experience, he wrote a poem, and uh, the title of the poem is "Suffering a Foot Injury." In this case, this suffering is not a uh, dukkha, but this suffering to be what is the word to. Uh, to uh, be with difficulties, be patient. I don't know. That is another word, another meaning for this one, suffer. Enduring. Endure, yeah, thank you. So enduring a foot injury. Uh, his poem is as follows. If I had a wife to care for me, if my parents were near, if I had money, I wouldn't have suffered. I, that means I cannot uh, endure this situation. In my dust-covered room, so 
at that time Antaji was half broken temple after the war. Uh, dust covered room lying on rugged quilt of Tom, uh, recalling Job. You know Job? Uh, this is the name, name of a person. This is not a work, but a job from the Old Testament. You know, he had a, a very painful experience because of the God's intention. God tried to uh, Job's uh, faithfulness. So Job lost everything he had and he became very uh, sick. But Job said something like, uh, God give and God take something, so he didn't uh, lose the uh, trust or faith in God. Anyway, so Uchamura said he, during this time he was like a, a job. Uh, in Japanese his name is called Yob. I don't know if it is closer to the original. Anyway. <coughs> I can bear this hard pain. I am grateful. So he was grateful because he had nothing. If he had a wife or a family or parents or someone who take care of him or he has money to go to a doctor, he may, he could make a kind of a story and try to find what is the best thing to do. But in such a situation with poverty, he had no other possibility besides just being there with himself. Uh, and the next he said, people worry, people worry, what if I lose my savings? What if I become ill, lose my job? In this case, not <laughs> this small job. Always framing their thoughts, what if? They are afraid through their fears. They are afraid through their fears. In a sense, they make a story. If this continues, then something uh, was something painful would, ha would happen in the future. Because of that kind of making story, you know, we suffer more, more than this pain by making us a story. So always framing their thoughts, what if? They are afraid through their fears are groundless, so those fears are groundless. Only reality is pain here and now, and this person. Uh, though I am ill, without savings or income, unable to eat, even if I starved, I wouldn't think it's strange. It's kind of natural thing. And just for that, <laughs> I am grateful. And about this poem, he, he wrote, <clears throat> through this experience, I realized that when I stopped fighting the pain and just let it be inside of me, the burden of the suffering would be lifted, would be if it mean it will disappear. Just be, just be here and now with the pain and <coughs> with only himself. He didn't think about the story of his life. You know, sometimes or often when we had a, such a painful situation, we first think about our past and why I became like this. And in his case, uh, because he wanted to be a monk, you know, he was from a pretty rich family. So he said, until he became a monk, Buddhist monk, 
disciple of Sawaki Roshi, he never washed uh, even handkerchief. Those are done by the housemaid. So he he never, uh, you know, it was it was like a Shakyamuni Buddha's life before he left his father's palace. So he never had had time. So if he continued to live in that way, uh, he wouldn't exp experience what he was in, in a painful time with complete poverty. So uh, he may regret the decision he made, or he may think about the future. You know, this is you know, too. This is too much because he had a uh, he com completed a master course, you know, graduate school. So if he wanted, he could be a teacher at a high school or even a college. Uh, so he might think, you know, after I go through this painful situation, I may find a job. You know. That kind of story, I think it's very natural to start to make such a story. But somehow by concentrating here and now without comparison with his past lives or future, he could just be where he was with that a painful situation. And he said, I have always felt this was an extremely variable experience in my life. So in a sense, this is uh, his, uh, how can I say, kind of a, a awakening experience, just completely here and now, no matter how difficult to be. But he said, However, despite that, if I had to encounter such terrific pain again, I would only be fooling myself. If I thought this past experience would be any help in breaking through the pain. So he says, uh, because he had such an uh, experience and it was helpful for him, if we, he think I'm now I'm, I had such an experience in a sense awakening experience, therefore uh, in the future if I had uh, I was in the same condition, you know I could go through without problem. He said if we think in such a way that kind of, that kind of a fantasy about enlightenment in then practice then training. If we had uh, you know, decisive experience of satori or enlightenment, then the rest of my life we can I could live without any problems. But that is a fantasy, that is delusion. So he what he's saying is we have to go through uh, you know each moment, each time. That is what uh, he said. Enlightenment or satori cannot be, how can I say, preserved, like uh, in a putting it, putting it in a uh, freezer. And the thing we need, we can use it again. <laughs> <laughs> but he said our practice or our awakening is moment by moment. It is always fresh. So uh, it cannot be. Uh, uh, dried food, but it's uh, always fresh. And when we leave it alone, then it becomes lifeless anytime. Uh, it's already 11.15, I don't have time, so I think that is enough. So even when we try to live with this magnanimous mind without making distinction. Somehow things are always moving and changing. 
depending upon what is happening inside of ourselves and what is happening outside of ourselves, uh, our life is always changing. So uh, we have to go through that uh, kind of, you know, that in this paragraph he said, he called this as a scenery of lives. Yeah, you know, scenery of lives uh, is like often we are on the train, we see outside things, you know, always go, coming and going. So we are just sitting in the train, but things are changing. But uh, our scenery of our lives is not like that. That means uh, we are also moving. So we are moving and things are moving within this, uh, how can I say, moving movement from both sides, you know, the scenery is happening. That means uh, if he didn't practice, uh, study Dharma and practice Zazen, he, he couldn't be just uh, here and now with himself, but he, I think, he had to go through creating the stories and he, he became more suffer. But because of his understanding of Dharma, he could, he, and practice of that, and he knew, you know, things are changing. And we don't need to make a story, just be there. That is one way uh, we can live without losing stability. Otherwise, we are always thinking what is better, this or that. And uh, we are always, you know, how that is, always shaky, always moving around, and we lose the stability or peace of mind. So that is what uh, scenery of our lives in this paragraph uh, means. He explained or showed using his pers personal experience. So each, uh, each moment things are changing inside ourselves and outside ourselves. Uh, what he want to say in this uh, section of this book is, therefore, we need a direction to go. Even though we try to live together with all beings, we need to have a direction which way we want to go. Otherwise, we are always uh, moving around based on the movement of uh, uh, outside of our service. Uh, this is what I have to say this morning. Any question or comment? Please. I have a, just a very quick question. Mm -hmm. I believe you used the phrase threefold world. Threefold? Threefold world. Mm -hmm. It was when you were talking about Roshan, mm -hmm. and I think you were talking about Shakyamuni, mm -hmm. and you, I thought I heard you say threefold world, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure what that meant. Could you say more about that? Did I hear you correctly? Uh, did I say threefold world? <laughs> Maybe I'm it sorry. Was something I'm else. sorry. Uh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Yes. Talk about the three minds. It was, yes, he had already if, talked if, about If I said threefold world means, uh, or another English uh, translation is three realms. Okay. That is uh, the realms or world of, uh, let me write in Japanese first, shiki, uh, yoku. Yokukai, shikikai, and mushiki. Yokukai, shikikai, 
and mu shikikai are called threefold word. Mm -hmm. And uh, this threefold word is sansara, mm -hmm. in which people are uh, transmigrating. And the first one is this yoku means desire, world of desire. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, realm, people are living for fulfilling their desire. And the second is a uh, shiki, is the same shiki in shiki sokuzeku, that is rupa. Mm -hmm. Rupa realm, that is material, material, material realm. That means people in these uh, realms is free from their, their desire. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, rupa materials yeah, are there. And uh, third is mushiki is arupa, means even such uh, material disappeared, mm. and consider, and it considered this uh, second and third realms is a realms or condition of our meditation practice in India. So. Uh, uh, Heavenly beings are within uh, the highest point of desire, world of desire, in which all of their desires are fulfilled and they are happy, but they have kind of a fear or uncertainty any time they may lose. And the uh, rest of the world is a world of heavenly beings who practice meditation and become already free from desires, but uh, condition uh, of uh, meditation uh, attained through meditation practice may <coughs> be lost sooner or later. Uh, so these are called three world, or three, threefold world. And you know, in May Genzo we studied Shobo Genzo Sangai Yuishin. The, that is three four threefold world is only mind. Mm. That is about you know this transmigration within three fold world are made only by our mind. Anyway, and uh, Buddhist Revelation means we leave from this threefold world and enter Nirvana. Nirvana is outside of this three world in which beings are transmigrating. Mm -hmm. Does make sense? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, something else. No question. Thank you.